Milk quotas will come to an end on 31st of March 2015. 30 years of restrictions on milk production in Europe give way to the laws of demand and supply. Dairy producers have a great many questions. What about price volatility, the end of financial aids and the reorganisation of the supply chain? We met British MEP James Nicholson, the man the European Parliament has placed in charge of paving the way for this and taking stock of the measures that are already in place. So the first question we received is this one. The milk package is implemented differently in the different member states and a different pace. We, the dairy industry, the dairy farmers and the processing industry will adapt to the new situation and will adapt successfully to the new situation, but we need now stability. Thank you. I think the truth is nobody can guarantee stability. When I did the dairy package in 2012, which is simply about three years ago, I made it very clear then, if there was not maximum cooperation between the producers on one hand and the processors on the other, then uh, we would face difficulties. And I think that it's fair to say there has not been that uh, trust between the producers and the processors and they have not built up, taken the time to build up that trust with each other. But you understand the fears today? Well, look, I think there's a, for the dairy industry long term, the future will be good. But I think they're facing at this moment of time and I think the Commission are wrong to try to say there's not a problem. There is a problem and we have got to do more to solve that problem. So now going back to the markets, you talked a bit about it. There's one question coming from a gentleman you probably know very well. Uh, here it is. I know him very well indeed, yeah. What EU measures would you suggest to better control increased volatility after elimination of the dairy quotas? And in particular, do you think that increase in safety net price to better reflect the higher production cost would alleviate the problems that European dairy farmers are facing? I do believe the Commission have been wrong in dragging their feet in putting a proper intervention price at the bottom of the market. And the market does need a safety net. Uh, and what came through very clear at the hearing, even if the safety net was increased from where the intervention price was increased from where it is at 18, at 18 pence or 18 cents to 22, 23 cents, which would be more close to the co cost of production, it would not necessarily mean that there would be a big rush to put milk into an intervention, but it would give a confidence and it would say to the market, we are behind you. Um, one question coming from France now. Près de 1400 producteurs fournissent aujourd'hui le lait pour le fromage AOP Cantal. Cet AOP pour notre région de montagne est une vraie chance pour valoriser le lait. Malheureusement, cela ne fonctionne pas. Aujourd'hui, 80% de ce lait est transformé par Sodial ou Lactalis. L'Europe dit qu'elle va permettre de réguler comment aujourd'hui, nous, petits producteurs, allons nous pouvoir imposer à ces structures de réguler les volumes plutôt que de produire en quantité industrielle, ce qui conduit à brader du fromage. I understand this very well. I've, I've been to these regions and I've seen the, the, the possible uh, the, or the problems that actually the, the people in these regions face. There are two problems. During the dairy pack package we did put in safeguards for PD, in the PDO and the PGI areas and, and that has, seems to have worked pretty well in parts of Italy and in parts of France and it was to specifically protect those areas by producing specialised cheeses and no one has told me that has not worked. I did a conference uh, recently for other MEPs from the Austria and the Tyrol area where you have uh, many farmers producing in, in <clears throat> mountainous areas and I think there is no doubt that, that they are going to come under major pressure to survive. They are going to have, national governments must have the flexibility in my opinion to use the Pillar 2 funds, and some are. Could you just explain what the second pillar precisely means to you? Well, the second pillar is the area by which uh, they, they can inject, they, they can, uh, the national government can convert part of their first pillar to the second pillar to actually give direct support. It's a social problem as well, and it's this one, do we want to these people to disappear? My belief is no, we don't, because they're providing a, a fantastic uh, contribution to our environment, to our mountains, to, our, to the regions that they, that they live in. Back to the costs, another question coming from 
Germany. Die europäischen Milchbauern sehen sich einer neuen Welle von Auflagen ausgesetzt. Auf der anderen Seite sind wir mit dem Auslaufen der Milchquote der Situation ausgesetzt, dass rund eine Milliarde Euro an Superabgabe in den europäischen Agrarhaushalt zurückfließt. Geld, was den Milchbauern für ihre notwendigen Investitionen fehlt. Wie können Sie bzw. das EU-Parlament sicherstellen, dass die eine Milliarde Euro Einnahmen aus der Superabgabe zurückfließt an die Milchbauern? Very good question. Uh, there's much disagreement over that. The super levy money, as is collected, must come direct to help uh, develop the dairy sector. I would be sympathetic to that. I would be supportive of that, because I know only too well that uh, the, the European Commission made a vast amount of profit the last time they, they bought uh, milk into intervention at 18 pence and sold it at 28 pence. And they, that, none of that money came in back into even agriculture, never mind the dairy sector. James Nicholson, thanks a lot and we'll meet again next year to see how it works. Let's hope so. Thank you. Thank you.